Hi, this is Mr. Mac. And this time we're talking about writing linear equations. To start off with, uh, a maxim that many people know, even if they're not mathematicians, is two points determine a line. Basically what that means is if you know two points, you should know where the entire line is. Now, along with two points to terminal line, it turns out that if you know the slope and one point, that will also determine a line. So we should be able to write the equation for a line anytime we know two points or when we know one point and the slope. Now, what I'd like to start with is the idea that there are a number of general equations for lines that are given names. For example, y equals mx plus b is a general equation for a line, and it's called slope-intercept form. Now, when you have a particular line in slope-intercept form, it might look like this. y equals 2 thirds x minus 3, or y equals 5x plus 7. Now, in those particular cases, notice that m actually has a number in its place, and b actually has a number in its place. But y and x have stayed as y and x. Now, one of the things that I need you students to understand is that when we use the general formula, slope-intercept, and are asked for an equation of the line, the job that we have is to figure out what number to put in for m and what number to put in for b. Now, sometimes we put uh, numbers in for x and y to find either m or b. But you have to remember, when you go back to write the answer, your answer must have y in it and it must have x in it. And the other letters, the other variables, need to have uh, constants substituted in for them. So we think of x and y as the variables, and we think of m and b as the constants. Now, another uh, general form for the equation of line would be y minus y1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x1. Now this form has been called point slope form and basically you would use this when you have a point and the slope and you want the equation of the line. Now m, x1, and y1 are the variable constants in this particular case. So when you are writing the equation of a line in point-slope form, you would um, use or you would find numbers for m, x1, and y1. And it turns out that what you do is the point that you have will be the point x1, y1, and the slope, of course, will be m. And so you'll put the slope number in for m, and you'll put the x number in for x1, and you'll put the y number in for y1. Now, since two points determine a line, it's also possible to find the equation of line when you have two points. But ordinarily what we do when we have two points is we make this a two-step problem. Step one, find the slope using the two points. And then step two, use the slope and one of the points in point-slope form. Now, in one of the solutions, the first solution where we ended up having to use point-slope form, I actually um, showed that it didn't matter which point you used and that either point along with the correct slope 
will give you the same equation for that particular line. Now, another general or a general formula is what has been called the two intercept form. Now, this one is not ordinarily found in books, but I would like you to know this one. Um, so let's take a look at it. X over A plus Y over B equals 1 is the two intercept form for the equation of a line. Now, in this particular case, A will be the X intercept and B will be the Y intercept. And this can be very handy if they say, write the equation of a line with x-intercept 3 and y-intercept 4. Well, if you have the x-intercept and the y-intercept, you can simply write x over 3 plus y over 4 equals 1. And if they just said write an equation of the line, you're done. Now, if they want more, perhaps you could change it into standard form by multiplying both sides by 12. Or um, once you've got it in standard form, you could um, solve it for y and get slope-intercept form. Now, uh, one more concept that we do need to talk about. The first part of this is inherently obvious to most students. If two lines are parallel, then their slopes are equal. It makes sense, I think, because if your lines are slanting in the same way, then they are going to be parallel. Now, the second part may not be quite so obvious, but it is important to know this. If two lines are perpendicular, then their slopes are the negative reciprocal are, are negative reciprocals. Recip uh, I can spell reciprocal. I don't need this. Are negative reciprocals reciprocal of each other. Sorry about that. Let's just take a look at a couple of examples. If we have a line with a slope m, then the perpendicular slope would be uh, for if the slope is 1, then the negative reciprocal slope would be negative 1. If the slope is 3, we would get negative 1 third. If the slope were 2 thirds, then the negative reciprocal would be negative 3 halves. If the slope were negative 1 seventh, then the negative reciprocal would be 7. See, so you flip the number and change the sign. So two lines with slopes of 1 and negative 1 are perpendicular. 3 and negative 1 third are perpendicular. 2 thirds and negative 3 halves are perpendicular. Negative 1 seventh and 7 are perpendicular. One of the ways you can check is if when you multiply the two slopes together, you get negative 1, then they are numbers that would be perpendicular slopes. And that takes care of that.